another episode of Dr. Darnisa's House of Religion, Magic, and Conjure. Hope everyone's doing well in these times. Um, been gone for a minute. And uh, so I've been teaching the class Meaningful Manifestations. Uh, thank you if you joined in the class. And other than that, I'm, you know, teaching my classes. So the videos may be a little, may take a minute <laughs> for me to get some videos to you. Um, yeah, because I got all these things to do. I'm going to grade some papers when I get off of here. But uh, this video is about, um, you know, I'm on Instagram and other forms, of course. And one of the main questions that people ask me uh, is, can I practice African traditional religions and be Christian at the same time? And, you know, I thought I had covered this, but again, you know, new people have the question, new people find me, or else people are, are, are trying to work it, right, in their own lives and they're not knowing how to do it or they're, 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 re they're receiving criticism, negative feedback from other people, telling them that no, they can't. And so that's what I just wanted to address today is how people can understand about, um, yeah, being Christian or at least having been brought up as a Christian and in Christian churches and learn and study and practice African traditional religions. So, you know, things like Ifa, things like uh, any kind of Yoruba practice, Fodun, um, or if you're in the Afro-Cuban, the Santeria, Lokumi, if you're in Brazil, the Afro, uh, Afro-Brazilian or Candomblé, these things, um, hoodoo, which y'all know I do. Um, and what I want to say, when I say, did I not answer this question? I mean, um, <laughs> the way that I've been um, teaching is African-American religious traditions really already incorporate the African because we are African descent people. So for us, it really cannot be an either or, right? So I have to take you back a little bit historically to African, um, African people being, you know, dragged over here to the Americas and slavery and um, understanding that African people came already, right, with, with our own spiritualities and our own worldview and understandings. And so when we were given Christianity here, we were we already merged it. I mean, that's exactly how we created forms of African American religions that we could live with. Because the biggest contradiction would seem to be how do any African Americans become Christian? Because the, the colonizer, the enslaver, forced you to be Christian. So that can't be a good religion for you if it's a good religion for your slaveholder. Why? And so the fact that African Americans were able to receive Christianity and uh, lean upon it as a foundation for African American culture here means that we did something with it. Right? And so in my African American religious studies classes, I talk about this. This is we created African American folk Christianity, those who remain Christian. African American folk Christianity, which is to say that we took our African understandings and mixed it together with the Christianity that we were given. So in looking at the way Christianity is practiced in African American traditions, we still have Africanisms in there. You know, call and response is an African way because religious practice wasn't understood in Africa to be solitary um, or just directed from the minister to the people passively and quietly. There was a call and response because this is about community back and forth, you know, sharing uh, the wisdom from God from the spiritual realm with the people and there should be a response. And so it's in, the, it's in our music, it's in our dancing, it's in our understanding of, of what God is, right? God is present in all things. You know, in a way I struggle for words because I'm like, right? You know, there's, there's an acknowledgement among indigenous people 
that got, has gotten lost from Euro, European people and, and Western civilization in terms of their understanding of religion. They tend to understand spirituality and God as something that's um, compartmentalized. You go to church on Sunday and that's it. You may pray also or read the Bible, but those things are compartmentalized. And so, but African American people are like, no, you, you know, this is a continual relating to the spirit of God because it's in everything. God is creator. And so for African American people early on, we had to, we had to, we, we focus on the Christian message. Uh, sorry. In the Christian message, we focus on the freedom in it. There's freedom inherently in this thing called Judaism and Christianity because God frees slaves, right? God told Moses, go tell Pharaoh, let my people go. My people shall not be slaves. So right from jump, we're hearing stories that say God doesn't want us to be slaves. And so no matter the fact that you're in slavery and your slaveholders are keeping you in slavery and telling you a certain story, here's the story of God freeing slaves and God coming to the side of the underdog throughout the whole Bible. God comes to the side of the underdog throughout the whole Bible. So African people early on who were enslaved in the Americas got that message from hearing these stories over and over. And so we were able to incorporate our Africanisms into um, Christianity. So if you go to an African-American church, a Baptist church, a Methodist church, whatever kind of church, right, it feels different. It's practiced different because it's more embodied. It's more of a visceral understanding that the spirit is going to come upon us or come and be with us like in Vodun, right? The spirit mounts. The spirit is welcome into the space. Now that's been presented to us like it's scary and like that's possession. And if you get possessed then it must be a demon and something must be wrong with you and you must be evil. But see, that's a European mindset about what being, um, uh, about receiving the spirit. I don't even want to, if I use the word possessed, people are already scared. So when you receive the spirit, that was, that was um, expected and wanted because it meant that you were, you know, the, the, you know, as a Christian say, the Lord has found favor, favor with thee, that God would come into your presence of the community and to you. Um, and so we have to remember that in our African way of doing things, we embrace inner divinity or in, embrace um, the presence of the divinity in, in all things because all things are created by God. It has the ashe. It has the ashe. The Asian people call it the chi, right, of, of the creator. All things are alive in a sense with the ashe, which, by the way, is how hoodoo works which is how magic is understood to work, right? When I say, you know, my channel is called Religion, Magic, and Conjure, what's that about? Everything has ashe. Everything has the energy of the creator in it. So can you be African-American and an African-American Christian and practice these African traditional religions? Now, I'm going to say yes. Um, if you're a very conservative Christian, certainly a fundamentalist, you wouldn't even be listening to me right now, but a conservative Christian or evangelical Christian, because you were raised that way, you still have relatives who are, they're probably going to say no, because they're going to say, you know, that that goes against what um, God teaches. It goes against the Bible. But again, think about the context through which they learned it. They're not understanding that from jump in the Americas, African people have already been mixing the African with the Christianity that we have. It's in our, it's in the way, it's in the black preaching tradition. That's called hooping, right? A good black preacher, what they should be able to do, how they should bring the word. It's already in the black preaching tradition. It's already in the music because in the African, you need the drumming. You need the percussion to invite the gods, right? You, you, you welcome that. And you know, in a black church, especially Baptist or Pentecostal, somebody is clapping their hands, somebody's shaking that tambourine, foot stomping, somebody's banging it out on that organ because that's natural to us as African descent people. 
So it's already there. My answer 10 minutes in is we are already, if you're African American Christian, you're all, we've already integrated the African. You just don't know it because we've been told that, you know, the African doesn't count for anything or we've been told we, we're so far removed from the African that we don't know, that we don't recognize that call and response in a church congregation is part of African culture, the back and forth between the spiritual leader and the community, right? So my answer, once again, is we're already doing it. Now, can you keep an ancestor altar, something basic, right? Yes, you can keep an ancestor altar because you're not worshiping your ancestors. You're not worshiping them. You're venerating them, right? Yesterday, January 30th was my mother's birthday. She passed away many years ago, but of course I honor her on January 30th. And um, so, you know, I changed up some things on my altar for her and I've got more than just her on the altar, but yesterday was her day on my altar. And, you know, people who will say, oh, no, you can't mix those things or you can't have an altar. But it's because they think you're worshiping your your dead relatives instead of God. But that's not what we're doing. And so as long as you're clear on what you're doing, you can be uh, multi spiritually multiply informed, as I say that I am. I have multiple spiritual belonging. Yes, I was um, raised Christian. I was baptized in the AME Zion Church. Who else was baptized Christian? Most of us, most of us are baptized Christian. And yes, I went to church at least sometimes growing up. I went to Baptist church. I went to Methodist churches. But I always had questions, right? I always had questions that were not being answered in those Christian churches or by those Christian ministers. And I was often running as a young child studying Eastern religions right away because I had all these questions. And my mother couldn't answer them, so I was at the library. And so I really you know, want us to realize that God does not have a religion. Humans have religion to un better understand God or to at least to, at least to have a, to maintain our a relationship with that God of our understanding. God doesn't have a religion. I, you know, I have a book right here. It was, um, I just happen to have it here for something else actually, but the altar of my soul, this might be helpful to somebody, the living traditions of Santeria. Um, by Marta Moreno Vega, Marta Moreno Vega, in case that's showing up. Uh, the Altar of My Soul, The Living Traditions of Santeria. And this is a, a woman who, I believe she's Afro-Cuban, really. I mean, I what I mean to say is she uh, is an American in New York, but her family uh, was Cuban is Cuban. And so she, she embodies, what I'm trying to say is she embodies an Afro-Cuban, uh, Afro-African-American mixed religious practice. And so, I mean, there's multiple ways that we've already been doing this as, as black people, as black Americans. And we have to get over being afraid being afraid that we're going to hell, being afraid that other people are going to judge us harshly. We have to get a, you know, I was about to say, <laughs> that's my book right there, Beyond Christianity, which I did not prop up there for the purpose of this video, but it is the name of my book. It is about African-Americans and new thought. Uh, we can legitimately go beyond Christianity or embrace Christianity and other traditions, but Yes, a caution. Many Christians will say, no, you can't because it's devil worship or, you know, it's worshiping false gods. But that is because of their own limited understanding about the African. You can light candles. You can have an altar. Um, you can, there are a lot of things that you can do without feeling like you are worshiping a false god. There are lots of things that you can do. Anyway, I hope that's been helpful. It's getting on here, catching up on uh, 15 minutes for the video. But let me um, have your questions. As I said, this is one that I get very often, so some of you may have some more specific questions. Go ahead and leave that in the comment section.
and I think that's it for now. Uh, continue to like, um, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. Especially like, because YouTube likes when my videos get liked, right? It helps me out, the algorithm and all that kind of good stuff. And, um, you know, now you can see that there's a join button on the channel. If you're with me 15 minutes in, join. <laughs> Um, cause we'll, you know, I'll be doing more for that community of people who join as a membership and we'll have some members only lives and some other things going on. But if you're somebody who enjoys what I'm doing and you listen to me for 15 minutes on, then join. Okay. Uh, at least, you know, like, share, subscribe. Bye for now.